What's up you guys? Mez here. I uh, was about to stream this morning, but I uh, was like having some serious technical issues and I was like, alright, well what can I do? As you can see, live chat, oops, something went wrong. <laughs> so I was like, alright, well let's do some recording and let's talk about some of the changes that I've done to Dale for this uh, Dalian campaign and I figure we'll talk about each unit for this video we're gonna do a video just on the, the lower to low mid tier units um, that we're starting with and uh, we could talk about some of the things that I've changed some of the things that I've done uh, to this campaign and to our enemies too because a lot of people will be like Mez you're, you're making your faction way too overpowered like what did you do to the other factions around you and so we'll talk about that too so let's uh let's hop on in to the live scene we'll talk about some of these changes so first off what we'll go through i think yeah we'll just go through each unit on the list here on the right for changes so first change is the dalian swordsman obviously the bread and butter unit of dale we made that the massive unit mod for it um we didn't change any like stats per se or upkeep um or no we doubled the upkeep uh because it's basically doubling the unit size like i ratioed it based on the size of the unit so the cost is up there but it's just to make the battles feel a little bit more massive um we didn't, moving on to the dwarves, we didn't change anything about the dwarves. The dwarves, I love both of these units. I feel like we need that. These are gaps that are in our roster. Or, no, I wouldn't say gaps. I would say that it's just adding something that uh, we need. And it, it, we can go right from the dwarves to the elves. We'll talk about kind of the alliance-based uh, 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 troops that we get. The, the philosophy behind the changes I did with the elves, like we obviously in custom battle, we still have the Woodland Scouts and the Woodland Sentinels available, but I brought in the elites, the, so I didn't change the name. I gotta still change the name, but it's basically the old school, which I don't think, I think people in f version three still have, or version four, I think 4.5 um, deck changed it to be uh, an ax guard, which looks like this guy. Um, and they changed this gate guard to be kind of like this staff wielding kind of unit, which I love. I think that's both really cool additions, but I kind of wish they added it on top of the other like Arakir units that the Woodland Realm have. So I brought back the spears. Um, I think Hiri Bang, Hiri Lang, and Hiri something, but it's the elite spear unit for Woodland Realm, and it's massive unit mod, so it's around a thousand upkeep because the the base unit's about five hundred, um, and so the cost to keep these is like really, really, really expensive mercenaries. But man, it's like a showstopper uh, for a lot of runes late tier units. It's kind of like, oh, this is what actually can compete. Um, with their late tier units, which it seems as though based on the campa campaign we have going so far, that's what we're gonna face. So the philosophy behind that is we have enough arrows in our army. <laughs> if you look up from the bottom, we got Barney, Barning Marksman, we got Dalian Longbowmen, which are, are, even though they're not as accurate, they're phenomenal, they shoot so far. Um, we got Hearthguard, one of the best overall archer units in the game that could fight cavalry as spearmen that their heavy armor they could hold the line as infantry they shoot black arrows like what basically the best unit we have in the roster athala rangers we could produce a good amount of those if we obviously if we hold the regions that can produce them um fantastic unit the the general's bodyguard royal guardsmen they shoot the black arrows very comparable to the hearth guard um in terms of stats but just obviously the lower number and so we have enough archers northman archers obviously up in the north we can have even just the militia tier archers that shoot i think a level three missile which i think is around like the dwarven traveler archer unit level so they can still get some kills as well 
Um, and so we have enough archers, so I'm like, I, I'm going to take out the Woodland Scouts and the Woodland Sentinels. Like, we got plenty of archers. I know elves, the stereotype is to have them be archers, but for epic reasons, let's throw in the spears and the swords. So this, I don't know if you guys watched my old Woodland Realm campaign. We had, so this is actually the sword, even though it has the UI of the axe guard. Um, it's actually the spear and, or not spear, shield and sword uh, unit. So it's that long sword that in that version, they, they it was a two-handed sword in that version. But in here, it, he's using what would have been the two-handed sword, which is like this long kind of crooked scimitar slash katana. Um, as a, a sword and shield so it looks so epic and when they actually do the animation it really looks like the the elf is slicing through and so let's move on from from the elves and the dwarves i think the addition is going to be awesome the cost is high so that balances it out and then obviously we'll get on to the changes that i've done to the enemy barons i changed it back to the old model of barons and the main reason for that is I mean, it's, it is, so the, so the Barding Erd has the style of the old barons, or the barons that they upgraded to, but it just looks too tubby and cheesy and not clean, and uh, the other version of barons, I'm like, this this version of barons is basically like the, the paladins of uh, Dorwinian, and this is what the barons actually used to be, and that the armor is just ornate, it looks elite, it looks like it's it's meant to be, it looks finely crafted, which I think is more dwarven than just having this boxy like tubby looking it basically just looks like a human sized dwarf uh but like very lowly put together like if you look at the king's shields fully upgraded like it's intricate armor still even though it is, if even if it is just all mostly one color one two colors um so yeah obviously i did the massive unit mod for the barons as well and up the upkeep cost um the barding herd uh, I didn't really touch other than making it massive unit mod and upping the upkeep cost. So uh, that's a big change. So that'll lead to me commanding likely less than uh, full banner armies um, because these numbers make up the difference that would have been. And obviously the cost numbers make up the difference that would have been for those full banner armies. The Ravanian could drought. So Basically, I, I did the, the massive unit mod for these guys, but I, I changed the uh, models in game for them quite a bit. And so I'll let that one be discovered by you guys in the, the stream. So obviously subscribe and check out the stream. Dell Swordmasters didn't touch at all. I'm like, these guys are epic. It's a good number. You kind of want your strike infantry to be kind of a smaller number. I found after using the, the hammer guard of the doors for so long, even though, I mean, the doors are slower, but having a smaller number, I find is easier to, to get that good charge bonus and have majority of the, the unit get that charge bonus when they're, when they're being strike infantry. Lake Town Pikeman doubled the upkeep, gave him the massive unit mod, didn't change any stats or anything on them. Um, obviously, we went through the dwarves and the uh, dwarves and the elves. It'd be fun to get the Minas Ithil Guardians if we go down to Minas Ithil and grab that basis for something fun and different. Uh, two two-handed swordsman using kind of would be quite the upgrade. Look at 16, 24, 8. Uh, 13, 17, 7. So these guys would be quite the upgrade. <laughs> a good chunk upgrade. Obviously, the Nor Northmen archers, the, the Northmen uh, people, rivermen, Northmen militia, um, Northmen archers, I didn't touch. I left them the same. I thought they were a great, great kind of bulk style unit. We'll actually be doing a battle uh, with them just to kind of show them off and how they'll be used in that early game. Once we, we get to a stream where we're past the mid game and, and starting to produce you know mid tier units and, and maybe even a couple of late tier units we'll do another one of these videos and kind of showcase some of these changes at least to the armor um the scouts and the sentinels obviously they're available in the custom battle but i took them out of being available in the game the thala rangers did not touch um we took away i think they had officers and i took them away i think every archer unit i took away art the officers just because they charge as one when you take the officers away they'll all 
drop their bows and bring out their swords. Whereas if you have officers and you charge with them and they still have ammo, three officers will go running on their own while the rest of the archers are like switching to their swords. So obviously, yeah, the Royal Guardsmen, I did not do that just because it's already a small number of units anyway. Um, Hearthguard didn't touch, obviously made a massive unit mod, doubled the upkeep. Earls, similar to the Barons, I changed their armor back to the old style. I changed the UI for that as well. I'm working on a UI for the Aowatha, <laughs> Aowatheuda, I guess. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, the horse guards, uh, because they're horse archers now. Obviously, they look like this when they drop their bow and arrow, um, which is great. They kind of double as shot cavalry. Really versatile unit. Like, unbelievably versatile unit. A lot of fun. Reminds me of using the horse archers that I made for the Woodland Realm, even though they didn't have a lance to go to after <laughs> they went to, you know, an axe. But it's nice to have them, you know, shoot with their bow and arrow and then pull out a, a shield to use in melee to kind of give you that little bonus. Uh, another thing that's going to be quite different, I didn't change the artillery at all. Uh, I've had a lot of comments being like, Mez, you just make the artillery insane. You buff them way too much. Um, and so now, you know, for the campaign side of things, with the, my playstyle, we're going to have convoys of artillery just ready to kind of fill in the gaps in our, in our expeditionary forces and our vanguard armies um, to take down walls, to, to counter enemy artillery if we don't say we don't have enough cavalry to really truly counter it um and so yeah obviously with the again the northman militia we didn't really touch farmhand pikemen i'm not sure if these guys are even trainable they might be i i, I swear i looked at the farm um the chicken farm or whatever and it did seem like you could train those rovanian spearmen now this is up in the air i was looking at the rovanian units and man they are low low stat units and i was thinking of changing them into like smaller type platoons of a little bit more elite troops and and customized elite troops so that's still up in the air obviously i have them in this army too which i'm going to throw on better armor for these guys because these guys do look actually a, a lot better when they're upgraded billman i didn't change I, I was thinking of doing the massive unit mod for but the halberds i find the, although the barding herd do work good in massive unit with in testing these guys work better actually when they're a smaller number when i tested them out with massive unit mods so i'm like all right let's keep them small so we don't you know automatically just have the biggest military once we get our economy on track um Dalian Longbowmen, obviously, I just took the officers out, um, just so they have that the ability, like the Athal Rangers, to charge as one instead of by themselves. Barding har Marksmen, um, I did leave the officers in. They, they have the massive unit on. The elite archers, I left the officers in, um, just because I would... They have the armor where you don't necessarily have to charge. You can literally just run your unit. See, even if they still have ammo, you can just run your unit right into the enemy as one. The massive units, uh, they're so big, it's hard to get a, even when they're out of ammo, it's hard to get a concise charge off with the massive units. Um, and so a lot of times you just run them right into the side of enemy infantry and then they'll, they'll drop their bow and arrow and, and, and pick up their sword and shield. And, and fight as one that way. So you don't even have to worry about charging as much per se. Another one I'm looking at is Rovanian Riders. We have them in this army too for a little test battle. Um, very low tier. They remind me of uh, Rohan's Scouts, um, which is uh, interesting because they have the row. There's gotta be some meaning to the, uh, the, the row in Rohan and Rovanian. Um, because it seems like they have some familiarities. Dale Cavalry didn't change. They're a fantastic unit. I, I went through all the armor trees. I was like, man, these guys have that armor upgrade at each level, uh, along with like the Dalian style units, that, that kind of low mid tier units. Um, and so I left them the same too. So just to cap off this video, I know we're kind of 14 minutes in, which is kind of like your good standard YouTube link, but let's do a little battle. What the hell? really care that much about it um we're gonna talk about the changes to the enemy 
because you're going to be like, Mez, you're just going to stomp on Dil Guldur with those changes. You really buffed them, even though you, you increased the cost uh, economically. So strategically, it's harder to achieve my units, but um, tactically, you know, obviously once they get into a battle, if I was just fighting the base Dil Guldur, then uh, it would be quite easy to, to fight them. And so, as you can see, if you're just looking through right now, some insane changes to Dil Guldur. I'll talk about the three units that you guys can't see, um, which we're contemplating upgrading to. So the three units you can't see are the Uruk Bodyguard, which is just still 78, which I might upgrade to 255 or 250. And then the Kummel's Shadow Rangers is the other one you guys can't see because my face is in the way. That I didn't change, that's still at 101. And then the Orc Maulers, I didn't change, they're at 228. But if you look through, a lot of them you're like, yeah, they were already at 250, but I upped more of them to the massive unit mod, Dolgaldur Hose, Dolgaldur Archers. Um, the Kamil Shadow Guard and Uruk Slayers, I kept the same. A lot of the armor piercing units, I kept the same. Mirkwood Uruks, I up to 250. Castellans of Dolgaldur up to 250. And all of this I'm doing without changing the upkeep for these guys. And so the upkeep has stayed the same. Moving down to the bottom. Didn't really change too much in the bottom. Um, the availability units in the, the EDB um, is higher. So they can achieve their, their mid-tier and late-tier units easier. Uh, with less of a turnaround, so we'll be fighting some of the harder units right away. Um, the, 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 how fast they can train troll catapults has gone up as well. Um, and so that's just some of the changes I've done to uh, Dil Guldur. Now if we go back, let's add in Rune, because I did changes to Rune as well. There's Rune. It's got to be Rune. So we'll do, yeah, Rune. No, 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 no. Um, and then Rune. hopefully I didn't just get rid of Dolgaldur. I'll put Rune as team one. Now go to team stinking three. <laughs> Am I losing something? I'm losing my mind. All right, we'll keep it like that. Yeah. Oh, because it's a fort battle. That's why. But I didn't just. Yeah, I just lost that army. Set him again. All right, we'll load the army back up and a sack. So. Obviously, you looking at the rune army, you're like, uh oh. <laughs> These are, you, as you did massive unit mod for rune too. So, yeah, Dentarii Warriors, massive unit mod. Um, Dragon Guard, massive unit mod. Loki Flagrim, massive unit mod. Their, their bodyguard, I didn't change. Because I our bodyguard, I didn't change. If I changed ours, I would change theirs. And that's why I'm contemplating on the Uruk bodyguard, because that'll change Mordor's too. As with this version, they share uh, bodyguards with each other. Uh, Warlord's Guard, I kept the same. Loki Scion Rim is massive unit mod. Loki Camp Rim is also um, massive unit mod. Interestingly enough, it says that they're elite pikemen. They're holding a shield, what looks to me to be a shield. So maybe that's a screwed up uh, um, UI as well. Variag Swordsman didn't change because that's Variag. Uh, Dragon's Wrath Guildsman, massive unit mod. Um, going through some of these other troops, didn't change the cavalry too much. Massive unit mod for the Den. Dairy Atai, Hunters and Clansmen. Um, and then what was this? Alcoth Spearman, I gave the massive unit mod to. So a lot of units. Not all of them, obviously. I didn't want to. Rune's already pretty powerful, but obviously, when they start putting out late t late game units, it's going to be insane to fight big, massive battalions of the Loke style troops. That'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a stinking Western shootout for sure. <laughs> So let's load up. Hopefully it'll keep the battle 
that I had. Yeah, good. Okay. And yeah, perfect. So we'll do a little battle. So that gives you a little bit of a glimpse of some of the changes I made. Hopefully that's good enough. If you guys have any suggestions to make it even harder for me, let me know. Those are the two factions that I've changed so far. I might change Gundabad. I might change Mordor. I might change Khan because those would be the natural next enemies if I'm going to go beyond the victory conditions for Dale, which really honestly depends on just the popularity of it. Well, I wouldn't even say that. If I really enjoy it, I'll keep playing it because I took the time to do these fun changes to it. So let's do a battle, a little fort battle. Talk about how we're using some of these lower tier units with Dale quite important quite interesting how you can Units, away my the most annoying thing how do you position them so that in the fort <laughs> with these massive units um, and that's pretty difficult and the, the thing that we're gonna do is run outside with them. <laughs> can't even get these guys out of their like formation <laughs> so we're gonna go out come together you know, we'll go out, make sure everybody's kind of positioned up here. And we'll, we'll move the cavalry out. You know what, we want to make sure, actually. There we go. Oh, first try. Romanian spears. We could probably shield wall up and get them to actually position there. Archers. These guys we could probably put over here if we get them in position. Give them a nice range so they can get that overhead shot. We'll command their fire. Our leader, but maybe over here. These guys. I love these guys, even though they're lower tier. They remind me of the dwarven laborers. Only now we can't position it. <laughs> okay, so, and then we had... Oh, I didn't even put the 1,000. All right, we're going to do this without the 1,000. You guys will see enough of the 1,000 rangers. There we go. So no 1,000 rangers. These guys are going to run out behind the infantry to kind of give some missile support. These guys will run out, set a line. And these guys, too, once we start the battle. But yeah, let's start the battle. These cavalry are going to be a force multiplier because it's going to draw troops off so easily. Let's run them out the back door. And these guys, let's run them out the front door. That actually does make a lot of sense. Have the swordsman and the billman kind of on the wings. Let's run them out. And then we're going to run these guys out kind of right behind them. Which by the time they get to the door, it'll, it'll likely be somewhat clear. And they can go to town. So the cav come out that side. We'll throw the Ravanian Spearman there. We can do some fun stuff with Shield Wall with them. These guys can shoot so bloody far, but they not do much damage to anything but that. These guys, I don't think they can quite reach, but we should start shooting with them anyway. These guys reach pretty far back too. Right there. Metal. And let's group up our missile units. So the good thing about forts, it lets you fight the enemy on a specific front because they're going, they're going for the square. They're not going to, like in a field battle, they're going to kill your army. So if you could fight with lower tier units where the objective isn't necessarily to kill them, it's to kill, it's to get to the square. Um, you put yourself at an advantage. And so obviously one of the changes, uh, it's, it's ideal that I'm fighting in a fort because one of the changes I do to all of my campaigns as I add in the ability to create forts. Alright, obviously we should probably shift fire. What 
whatever the heck it is that's shooting us, but I'm gonna shift fire for these guys to the fire because they'll actually do enough damage to them. We men of Dale will help you. Men of Dale. It's a cluster at the entrance. We have five units trying to get out of the building. The hope is that these guys can get in position so we can drop our special ability. Rovanian right. Taking their sweet time, Rovanian riders. Now, be nice. We can actually start to surround these guys with the swords. Let's do that. Archers. Interesting audio glitch. These guys are calling themselves archers, and they are clearly not. Let's give them a throw. And um, yeah, let's give you guys a throw too. So they they did that absolutely properly. Let's go with the Romanians over on the outside too. Hope we'll do our host. We can maybe use our cav pretty soon. Let's drop this down. Javelins are coming in. Fantastic. We're gonna march these guys just up a little bit. I'm gonna let these guys throw first and then I'll move these guys up. Got a Romanian's up. They're gonna take the brunt of the charge from this Dogal Door post. And once these guys are done throwing, which shouldn't take too long. Chip fire to them. Fires on the general. Let's see if we can draw him out with our cavalry. We got kind of rally point. I'm thinking the general is going to come after our billman if he if they don't. Okay, now the general's in range of the jabs. So we're going to shoot at the jabs or at the general. Just a little bit anyway. And we're gonna shift fire back with our lower tier archers to the hunters. That defeats a distinct possibility there. We're gonna help help our Ravanian spearmen out because they are a lower tier units. Okay. Now we wanna turn our billmen over here. Shift fire back to these guys. Big charge coming in from our Romanians. A little bit of support. Now, another thing I didn't tell you on the majority of Dolgoldur units will not break, too. So that's another challenge I gave to myself as well. So, big charge coming from, from them. So, as you can see, these guys are out of ammo. So we're gonna run them out on the left lane here. So once you get out there, Cav, we can chase them out. See, that really weakened that Dol Guldur host. These guys are fighting fantastic against them. Now we can run right across the line of these guys, right into the back of that. Obviously, Dalian Swordsman really holding the front. Northman Militia is struggling a little bit more. These guys do not want to finish shooting, so we're gonna actually have them run out. Now Northman Archers are done shooting. Ultimately, you bring them out to support. Try to have them. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna shift out. I don't want to attack these guys yet because we got people shooting at them. We're gonna 
drop guard mode on our bills. Any hunters fighting up a storm. Let's see if we can throw it out. Now, so what I've noticed with these guys in particular, the rivermen, they're very glitchy. Very glitchy. Now, did I kill? It appears to me that we're just about out of ammo. We can close the gap with our rivermen, which I think we're gonna do instead of using the cap. Okay, now these guys are ready, we can run them out too. Ideally, you want to have a leader, the Royal Guardsman, leading the force because these guys will break very easily. You don't want to leave them on their own, and if you're leaving them on their own, you're putting them right in the square because then they won't they won't break. Now, the general's moving on out. Let's make sure that you guys are right through. You guys can go over here and then shoot them down. I, I should make the herd bodyguard unbreakable too because the rest of his units are going to keep fighting. Oh, don't go to your host, obviously put up a fight. That might be the leader. In fact, it likely is. I think the orc captain. Like an Easter link unit. Okay, Our now. Men have captured the enemy general. Guard him well and make it so we can Our leader is in on here. Looking gorgeous. Red unit. I think red. The color lines. So don't ask me about colors, please. That's the end of that. So that's interesting. They can't break, but they can pull the retreat order because they're attacking. So, fun, fun in the sun. Let's attack with the whole army. That's the end of that. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully we'll be able to get streaming again soon, maybe tomorrow morning. As I'm thinking it's a little bit late. I could stream for an hour and a half if it works. So start uploading this video. Or we'll test the stream out and then start uploading this video. Captain Thror. Dwarven name. <laughs> you can see kind of who gets the kills. Casualties inflicted. What a split, eh? 
even the Royal Guardsmen, the elite unit of the force. I mean, they're smaller numbers, so kind of give them the benefit of the doubt, but only 98 kills. Northman Archers with 229. So out of the all, the all the militia units you get, those Northman Archers did fantastic with 229 kills. Dalian Billman actually doing the worst, but they were fighting, I believe, the Uruk Bodyguard. So that's kind of their challenge right off the bat, is they're fighting the Uruk Bodyguard. So they had a hard time. Dalian Swordsman, on the other hand, were fighting kind of more of the mob, the trash, and they're a fairly good unit already as it is. So only sustaining 72 casualties and 444 uh, casualties inflicted upon the enemy. So fantastic fighting. Dalian uh, Longbowmen, they could shoot so far. And as long as if you're shooting into trash mobs, you're going to get a lot of kills with the Dalian Longbowmen. I think they have a four missile attack. They shoot the medium arrows. Um, but they have such a fantastic range that I just absolutely love using them. So, in any case, guys, hope you enjoyed. Uh, talk to you soon. See you on the next stream. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and we'll see you later.